So welcome everybody. My name is Ellie Cohen. I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. And this is Qi Talk. It's just a 30 minute of going uh, into a, a certain subject in, in healing, self-healing, healing yourself. Uh, and uh, this podcast, this is going to be tran transcribed into a podcast called Awaken the Healer Within. And I'm so excited. This is a special time, a special time be between uh, summer and winter. So it's a time of transition. And we kind of talked about it last time, but I know I didn't send a, a notification via email. We had a small group here. I wanted to kind of share this with a bigger group so everybody could uh, could could uh, enjoy it and hear it. Um, and time of transition is uh, is time of of change. <laughs> yeah, so between we have transition between uh, different things it's the, like summer and winter between day and night between work and pleasure between between walking your dog and cooking and we have we have transition that we do throughout the day and um and this is where we usually have issues with this is what we usually have uh, uh, how we accumulate stress in these areas of transition so this is going to be the talk today and I'm going to give you also some really easy tips to how be more, how adding more calmness and ease into your life, into your day by uh, being more successful in transitioning from, from things. <laughs> so let's start with a little bit of, um, of meditation, of a little bit of a, a Qigong or more like a Neigong practice, a breathing practice. Let's Allow yourself to relax into your body and close your eyes, if you will, just kind of like if you close your eyes, there's less distraction and you can really feel your body. You can really feel, maybe notice what area in the body you feel at first when you are feeling your body. Is it the chest? Is it the legs? It's interesting. The first thing that you notice when I tell you go into your body is where your energy is usually is or resides. And some people are too much, too much thinking, so they immediately think about the, the head and the brain. So some people are very emotional, so they're right in the heart center. Uh, so it's interesting to notice where you go first. And try to open your attention to the entire form and shape of your body. The legs, the feet, the sit bones, the lower back. Yeah, so start to spread your energy, your attention, which is your energy, evenly throughout the body, visiting with different area and greeting the body. So as you put your attention in the body, you're saying hi to this physical form. A hello, yeah, a cheerful hi, a smile. And we wanna come to the body with, with compassion, with love, with gratitude. And this is what's gonna start to move the wheels of self-healing. So your attention also has an energy behind it, which is your attitude, or it could be your intention too. So there's sometimes we putting attention into the body, into a certain area with, with criticism. And sometimes we, we are putting attention with love or with so many different emotions. And so see if you can try to shift your attitude, the energy behind your attention into a positive one, into a greeting, an old friend, to gratitude, self-love and compassion as you bring your attention into different parts of your body. And especially for areas that feel maybe that have issues, pain or Difficulty, these areas needs your love the most. So just move your chi, move your energy 
And it's like the combination of attention and attitude. And as you do so, let's move our attention also into the breath. And we're going to change the breath to breathe in a certain pattern. So we're going to breathe, inhale through the nose. One, two, three, four. And exhale twice as long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So four and eight or, or three and six. When you exhale, exhale from the mouth. See if you can do it, you just count one, two, three, or maybe four also. And then twice as long as you exhale from the mouth. Slow exhalation, because it has to be long, it has to be six or eight. Now, you don't have to stand upright in any meditation posture, just really relax into your chair or wherever you are. Just feel comfortable. I don't want you to feel any tension. And as you are exhaling this long exhalation, see that you're softening the body. In the beginning, just muscular tension from the shoulder maybe, melting away. As you go deeper into the long exhalations, you're lowering your attention to the lower part por portion of your body, to your feet and your legs. So as you're sinking down with long exhalations, moving your energy to lower portions of your body all the way to the feet as you're melting and releasing stress and tension any tension any muscular tension think about the inhalation is putting more space space inside of you and the exhalation releases blockages and tension so you can inhale to the heart and put more space around the heart and exhale and just release that tension from the heart all the way down to the feet and the earth one two three one two three four five six Nice and relax and let's open our eyes. Oh, beautiful. What a beautiful shift. Hi, Carla. Hi, Gail. Good to see you guys. So, um, yeah, this is a very special. I don't know if you felt anything changes in your body. It's really, really nice. So let's let's talk a little bit about transitions. <laughs> and we usually have problems with transitioning. Yeah, we usually take our stresses from work into our relationship, wherever our relationship, our, our significant other should really be a place of, of comfort and love and bring stress into it from work or vice versa. And, uh, and we don't have enough space. We don't put enough space between things that we do. Similarly, we don't put a lot of space, a lot of people have problems falling asleep or waking up or sleeping really soundly. And that's really an, an inability to transition well between day and night, because at night your mind needs to really shut down and, and give way to yin energy. And we are so young in our mind, an active mind that it's hard to shut it down. So this is a time I think a fall is to talk about kind of transitioning and to give some tools and resources of how how to do transitioning. And I just want to also talk a little bit about the pandemic time. You know, there's this recent research that 
I found out that people uh, that work from home uh, have a higher level of stress. Yeah, there's a questionnaire sent to big, big firms that send all the employees to work from home. Uh, it's a very recent studies. And they're all seeing that the, the well-being and health and well-being is actually down uh, across the board. So more people are stressed out sitting at home, looking at the computer in Zoom calls all day. So they, if before they had some transitioning bef between uh, home and work now it's all com <laughs> it's all in one place it's all being done at home some people also uh their you know their social interaction is through zoom uh in some places and 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 um even working out <laughs> from home so how do we make more and and this is all because we don't have enough space in between between times between functions that we do and really the way to do it, and this is by the way this is the whole premise of chi breaks that i put together a few years ago the chi breaks the word chi breaks is like take a break do qigong and the idea was to do sequences of 10 sec 10 minutes and to do practices that are really good for cleansing and clearing energy so in qigong we always talk about we a lot of time we talk about there's a concept in chinese medicine it's called acquired qi and i talk a, a lot about it in class right acquired qi is qi energy that you take that is not yours you take from other people you take from the news you take from other people's opinion yeah we always being sold or some idea or an emotional, even some emotion, emotions that are not yours. You have a person behind you in the car and he's very angry and, and somehow you took his anger. Yeah, you took it on. So that's, we call it acquired energy. <laughs> and it's different than your signature energy that is, is, it's part of you. So how do we, uh, and this is the whole premise of purging. So in the, in the classes, what we're going to practice during the classes in in this period of time is more cleansing and clearing practices in Qigong. There's a lot of breath, a lot of breath technique because the fall is a time when we when we move into the winter and move into the cold season, when we really want to uh, strengthen out the lung qi. So the lung would connect with your immune system. The lung would be the breath would connect to be able to do transitions well. So I really invite you on one way, and, <laughs> and one way to really connect with, with the idea of this chi bricks that I'm sending. If you are, if you are part of my subscription class, like really access it and practice it. And, uh, and for people that are not, the way to really con do a, a, a really good transitioning between things is to, is to take some time, take like five minutes, and connect with your with the senses connect with your body and connect with the sense. this is how we metabolize energy we metabolize energy when we get out of our head out of a thinking mind and move it through the body so the the way to metabolize energy is through the body is to feel what to feel sen in sensation like the sensation on your body like what we did in the beginning of the like the ceremony that we did in the beginning was a perfect example of how to create a transition in a couple of minutes. The exhalation are longer twice than the inhalation. That's a cleansing breath. And you want to make sure that you exhale all the way out. So there's no more air in the lungs at the end of the exhalation. So when you do this type of breathing for two, three minutes, there's a lot of studies on this type of breathing. It's, it's also in yoga and Qigong, it's across Asia, um, kind of Asian uh, ancient cultures. It's really changing the nervous system. Your nervous system shifts shift because the, 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 the control of the breathing mechanism is on the, on the limb in the reptilian brain. So really at the base of the skull. And these are where the also emotions are being controlled by the neuropeptide. Yeah, there's a whole book about this. Uh, Candice Pratt, I think, wrote about this. Uh, it's called uh, the, 
the chemical of emotions or something like that. I don't know the name exactly right now. I slipped out of my head. But really, there's a lot of research on it and how the breath is connected to emotional, it all being connected to the reptilian brain. So when we change the breath, we're really telling the body that we're not in a fight or flight response anymore. We don't have to like, we don't have to be stressful. So the breath would really release a lot of trauma also from from the body. There's a lot of research on trauma of soldiers that came from Iraq and the, really the only thing that was very beneficial that really moved them through was not psychotherapy or yoga or it was more uh, breath practice, certain breath practice. So breath would be really important. Another Another way to cleanse your energy is get out and get your feet on the ground and walk in nature. So a five minute walk in nature or just walking in the street would be great. But the way you do it is that you connect with all your senses, connect with the vision, you connect with your with your felt sense, you connect with what you hear, what you smell. Instead of thinking, a lot of time we walking in nature or walking the street, we're thinking, we're not wanting to think if you really want to make it very a strong transitioning, a strong uh, cleansing practice, you really want to connect with just, let's say, the vision, and you connect with colors that you see far or close. Yeah, you just you just walk for five minutes and all you do is observe colors or texture, or just sounds far or far or near near or far sounds. So you really want to connect with the five senses. <clears throat> and not with a thinking mind and that would after five minutes after a few minutes of this that would that would really be uh good for transitioning into something else <laughs> the most powerful and and of course there's qigong practices in qi in qi breaks in the fall that are all has to do with purging energy and these are really effective they're really, uh, they're really effective because they it's a movement practice with breath, with intention. So it's kind of like a double whammy, if you like, <laughs> of how to really cleanse your energy. Um, and you can do it for five minutes. And that's very important. You know, before I start this class, I, I did what I just did with you guys. I did it for three minutes. Because I just came from, <laughs> I just rushed in through the door and I had three minutes and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do some breathe. And as I did whatever I showed you and it changed my energy. So breathing would be the quickest. Qigong would be really a good one too. And then, uh, and then walking in nature, really connecting with not thinking, feeling, seeing, hearing and really connecting with that, that would be, that would be the way to, uh, to go about transitioning better. And where do we do that? <clears throat> we do it between like, okay, so let's say you finished work, you worked on the computer, you want to go into your uh, loved ones or your friends, you do it, you do it between these places, <laughs> between day and night. We have the good night qigong between day and night and that geared toward night energy so if i want to wake up in the morning and feel alive there's the good morning qigong and we and i kind of like basically designed this class to lift up the kidney chi to open the lungs to lubricate all the joints for instance yes yeah, so so i know where i'm going i'm going to do something active this is the morning time i want to shift from bed to morning and the transition would match that energy that I'm going towards. If I'm going to meet with my lover <laughs> from a very stressful day, I would have to do some heart practice, <laughs> right? In order to shift and to be present with the person that I and the, open the energy. So, so now we're getting into more <laughs> specific way to transition, depending on where do we want to transition to. But this is really important because we that's where we usually have problems. You usually have problems in transitioning, transitioning in, into the holiday season, transitioning into seeing your family, <laughs> right? And then 
how do we how do we prepare for this how do we cleanse our energy and how do we be present with uh with what we're going to so this is like a few tips i shared it last week as well but um i i wanted a, a bigger um you know audience to kind of hear it again and and to go to go kind of into it in a little bit more detail so i hope that was um informative and i just also want to open it to to you if there's any questions about it or or doubts <laughs> or like uh, anything or something that you inspires you about it or not so i i'd love to uh to hear from you if there's anything that you want to add to it uh just gonna raise your hand or unmute yourself and and uh i'd love to hear from you uh but really this is uh and and just one more thing about the the fall season because we are entering the fall season very important to do breath work yeah in order to gear into to shift into winter this is uh the time where the pathogen of the lungs is dryness right the rain especially in california there was not rain this winter so much and usually in the fall all the trees are losing their leaves <laughs> uh, the dryness is more prevalent and we don't want the lung to get dry so uh it's very important to uh to drink a lot of water in the fall season, to do a lot of breath work. <clears throat> There's actually some herbs, Chinese herbs and foods that, that helps with that um, as well. We're not gonna get into it in this talk, but uh, yeah, if you're interested, there's uh, workshops recorded about lung health that I've done so many times. And I think you can, there's are in products under my website, you can, purchase it. There's the Wei Qi breathing technique that is also a workshop available for purchase. And this is really about how to strengthen your lung energy and, uh, and your immune system. <laughs> Very powerful technique. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the lung, t the fall season is also time to let go of things that you don't like. Let go of the past is a time to uh, like, kind of like the trees losing up the leaves, some time to cleanse your house, to throw things that you don't like, to disconnect from people that takes your energy and you don't, I mean, it's just time to cleanse and to let go and to, to really let go of the past and, uh, and to cut cords and to really cleanse your energy. And a lot of times it's connecting with sadness. Yeah, the lungs is connecting with sadness and when it's extreme, it's even depression, but the sadness, the grief come from holding on to the past. Uh, yeah, and then we we want to, uh, and, and it's okay to grieve. It's okay to 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 do that. And this is the time for the, as people get very emotional in the in the in this fall season. And it's okay, and it's good to express it, and it's good to feel it. But it's also very important to strengthen up the lungs, to connect with energy, with the, to feel uh the opposite energy to feel proud <laughs> now to feel proud is very important to feel self-worth self-esteem is very important in the fall because in the fall the lung falls <laughs> there's a, a lot of sadness yeah so so like even being proud of coming here today and listening to this as a self-care as a self uh love um uh, talk that we do you know, even feeling proud of, of the fact that whatever you did. So that's very important in the fall to really lift up the lung energy from breath, foods, water, but also from emotional energy, like self-worth, uh, feeling proud of yourself. Yeah, people that are proud are the chest is open. Yeah, so uh, any, I think I'm talking too much. <laughs> Uh, who wants to talk, Edward? Here, I, I see that you uh, unmuted yourself. Yeah, first of all, never say that you talk too much because <laughs> it's gold. Everything you say is gold, and it's given me, I can speak for myself, me an incredible gift. And when you started out in the beginning, um, I, I was going to fall asleep again. It's like, good night, Qigong. And it's what I do. I, I mean, you've given me eight, nine, ten hours of sleep a night with good night qigong and 
uh, it's the breathing. It's all in the breath. And what I've learned a long time ago is, you know, you said the, the lung and sadness and, you know, the past. Well, I can't change the past. And it's really, it all works in the here and now. It re, re, that's where I can really manufacture all that I want. That's where I can manifest. That's where I can heal now, not in the past. Mm -hmm. not in the future because i, I got to deal with with the body now so i've learned so much from you these have been uh gifts so keep on talking a lot <laughs> you know and it's about <laughs> it's about getting out of our heads and yeah. um it, it just it's not going to work in the past can't change it but create a new future create a, a new now beautiful so, thank and you. that's Thank you. And that taps into the lung energy of inspiration. So when there's two, there's the negative and the positive in the lung, one is sadness and grief, and the other one is inspiration and courage and courage to move forward. And inspiration is looking towards the future. And this is really a kind of a healthy lung chi is to how do we cultivate inspiration? Uh, inspiration is something that connects to the future. And we always think about the future. I mean, a lot of people think about the future and they're afraid. What's going to happen? <laughs> or anxiety is also a way to connect to the future in a negative way. But how can we create inspir inspiration? Is a, is, a, is a tool to see the future, to, to go towards your dream. You know, and, and you have to have a vision. You have to have a, a dream that you're going towards and that would negate the anxiety and that would negate the fear if you are really um you have a, a dream you have a goal you feel the fear you feel this but you have a direction and that's really the power of the lungs that's inspiration and courage the courage to move forward and to see the past instead of sadness over the past but to relate to the past from a place of gratitude. And that's really the, the, the message of the Tao is to, um, is to transform, you know, sadness into gratitude. And that's really connected to the heart. So what would heal the lung is the heart. If you go two organs back in the Chinese medicine uh, organ system, you go lung, digestive, and then there's the heart. So the heart would control the lung. So if you're feeling sad, what you need is love. <laughs> you need love. And, and love and connection would heal sadness and grief. So isn't that beautiful? <laughs> so, uh, oh, yeah, Bart, thank you so much. Yeah, I saw your message. Um, so this is this is kind of like today. Let's continue this. Let's continue to talk about fall energy because I know that there's a lot of people suffer from sad depression and anxiety, and I wanted to make the connection, and we already do here. So let's finish that because we are on the half hour um, timeline. Unless there's somebody that wants to share something quick, <laughs> and you think that it's really um, important. Yeah, Gail, go ahead. Oh, Ellie, you are such a joy because you bring that celebratory energy to each of us. And there is so much fear, so much divisiveness. And yet you counteract that so beautifully. And I feel that this is a time to be fully conscious of our actions and to act without compulsion and beyond habit. Some of us have created habituated patterns that we need to let go of. And as you say, letting go of the past, but what we're doing with our habituated patterns are bringing that which was into that which is and possibly will be. So mm -hmm. thank you for your talking. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Gail. It's always a pleasure to hear you and your your talks. It's so beautiful and supportive. Thank you guys so much. 
Let's, uh, uh, Edward, you raise your hand again? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, just one quick thing. So yeah. my mantra is the past is thinking. It's all pure thought. You're just going back. So my mantra is thinking is the lowest form of human ability because it gets you in a stuck, sad, unfixable, unchangeable thing. So it's to create now what you want to create. And I could even just jump in. You know, I lost my father. You lost your father when you're very young also. And if, I mean, he literally took a bullet for me and got me out of Vietnam and got me out of the army and got me to California. And I can't be sad about losing him because he gave me a gift. So I can turn everything quickly into the positive. Yeah. And get oh, out of the thought. Beautiful. That is so, beautiful. Yeah. And that's really how you shift. That's a beautiful uh, way of, of transitioning sadness into love and into gratitude. That's exactly what I was talking about. Thank you for that. You know, because sometimes I talk in just general terms and uh, it's nice to have a, an example to, for people to kind of grasp on. So, you know, Edward, thank you for that. Yes. This is exactly this is exactly a, a good example for that. All right, guys, thank you. So, oh, yeah, we have Carla. Carla, hey, Carla, good to see you. Hi, thank yeah. you so much, Ellie. Uh, beautiful, beautiful today. Beautiful theme and um, deep, deep and heart filled, which I always am grateful for being with you. And, and the people here, too, everyone has such insight. It's wonderful. And I was just, um, what Edward said about, you, you said, thinking is the lowest form of human ability. And I had a wonderful spiritual teacher who spoke about, he used to say, you can't think if you're going to be with me. <laughs> you're, with me you're not thinking. And what he did say, though, which I loved, he said, amusement is the highest vibration of our ability. So joy and laughter yes. and amusement. And I even saw him do some profound healings with people with very serious things going on. And he did the healing laughing, laughing. And I was just like, whoa. And he used to say, you have to uh, keep amusement on tap. You have to have it so you can cultivate your amusement like at any moment you need to <laughs> get like buckets of it, buckets of amusement. So he would say, you know, just practice laughing over anything so that when you really need it, you'll just be able to laugh. So I wanted to share that because it reminded me of. Oh, uh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful and a beautiful teaching is so true. So true by vibrational energy and joy and playfulness and, you know, and curiosity and uh, all that stuff yeah thank you so much carl i feel your energy it's just there's something behind the story that you're telling which is whoo so heartfelt it's like big heart there i could feel you oh great thank you <laughs> i think everybody does too thank you you attract so, i think a heart group here we got a heart group beautiful <laughs> all right great so let's let's close this by um by again closing our eyes and feeling our heart because we are i feel that my heart is full right now so i'm happy so let's just close the eyes and feel this energy here in the heart and smile to it and bring that joy that you're talking about uh into the heart and one of the practices that I love from one of my teachers is to watch the heart and imagine it is like a smiling baby. It's like a baby that is laughing and smiling and you're looking at it and you smile back to it. So our organs are like our kids and we have to take care of them and send them love. And the heart is the most important organ in Chinese medicine. It governs all the energy and all the other organs. So <laughs> let's let's kind of connect with our heart as we close our eyes and put this inner smile to this baby heart.
and bring to mind an experience in the past that you felt very good, that was feeling very happy or very joyful. It could be a year from ago or it could be 20 years ago, it doesn't matter. Something substantial that you felt really good. Either you felt proud. Yeah, we're talking about the energy of feeling proud or happy. Something that you did. Or you felt, yeah. And now shift it to something that inspires you about the future. How do you see yourself a few years from now, maybe five years from now? Where do you want to see yourself in your health, in your relationship, in your profession, wherever it may be? See yourself in the vision mind, stronger than what you are today. Maybe whatever. I don't want to give you ideas. It's your own thing. So just see whatever you see yeah we have inspiration towards the future and now let's just think about an action that you can do today something that you can do today or this week that will get you closer to this place what can you do this week to get you closer to where you want to be. Nice. And let's open the eyes. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, beautiful talk today. And I'll, I'll see you next week. Take this energy with you. I hope I shared some good inspiration something to put on the inspiration board so you can really uh, focus on that <laughs> all right guys thank you so much i'll see you in class uh, beautiful beautiful today thank you bye